Good day and welcome to the JavaScript vlog. Today we're going to talk about functions in JavaScript. Uh, I'm going to make myself so tiny. So there's a couple of ways of uh, declaring functions in JavaScript, which is saying three. Uh, number one, what is that comment that is marked down? Number one is what we call function expressions, and they look like this: bar uh, obliterate. Do it like this. Let's say target. And then you say console log. Ah. Castle mayhem. Mayhem. So this is a function expression. The number two way to declare functions in JavaScript are function declarations. And they look slightly different. So we say function first, and then we say obliterate to uh, target. Okay, I'm gonna use Jimmy Cooler. Cooler. And then the third way to declare uh, functions in JavaScript, uh, which is a new one in ECMAScript 6, is ES6 arrow functions. Or you could do something like this, for instance, uh, const uh, obliterate dear. Uh, and it's something like this, for instance. We're not doing anything, but we would say like uh, cows and mayhem, cows, cows. Okay, so these are three different ways that we have in JavaScript to declare functions. Why should you care? Good question. Good question. Why should you care? You should care because they behave slightly different and based on the method that you choose to declare your functions, you're going to be able to do some things and not others, you're going to be able to divide your functions better, you're going to be able to use this or not. Uh, there's some different things you need to take into account when using these different types. So let's take a look at the first one, and I'm just going to command this out for the time being. Okay. Now we have this, is the, the most common way to declare your functions. So, my Phone is ringing. I'm gonna take the phone. I'm back. So function expressions are happen whenever we declare a function as an expression. This could be like a var declaration. It could be a property declaration. Uh, it could be using a function as an argument. So all these are expressions. Uh, the most common way to declare a function in this manner is like this. This is what we call an anonymous function expression and it is anonymous because it doesn't have a name. The best way to see this is actually using it as an argument. Well, let's say that we have uh, some evil minions in an array. A gold, a uh, gold, a gold, a skeleton, skeleton, a goblin, and a banshee. Okay. And now let's say that we want to obliterate all of them, so we just do it for each, and then we say function, function, uh, target, and then we add this, and then we say console log, yep, you obliterate the target, okay? And now we can run it. The GSV has a shortcut for this, that is command plus enter in, uh, in uh, Mac. You can easily see all the shortcuts here. Yes, you know, nice, you know. So we do command enter, and this works as we would expect. So it says you obliterate each one of these items. But what happens if we. something happens? What happens if something happens? What happens if we throw an error? Oh no! Die, die. Something like this. Uh, so in this case, if we run the code again with command enter, we can see that, oh, there's an error, and this in this file. Uh, but you don't have any information about which uh, specific function caused the error, which is because this function doesn't have a name. This may not be an issue if you have a smaller program like this one, but if you have a you know production, a real world app application, and uh, you're trying to find where the error occurred, it surely helps if you have the name of the function. So we can fix this uh, pretty easily. We just need to add a name to this anonymous function, and we do it like this. We say obliterate here like this, obliterate. Now this becomes what we call a name function expression. 
And now when we throw the error, let's clean this with Ctrl L. So clean console, use Ctrl plus L. So when we do this, uh, and now we run the code, we can see how now, and click here, here, here. So you have the now, the name of the function is obliterated, so this will probably help you much more uh, when you're trying to find this in your source code. So these are name function expressions. They're like uh, anonymous function expressions, so they have a name and they're easy to the bag. Uh, so if you're interested in inspecting the actual name of a function, uh, so functions have a name property. Uh, in this case, let's see that, imagine that, that you have again a function like this, the one that we had before, and then, uh, yeah, like this for instance, and then we do name. We console log this, and we say name of function. Like that. And now we clean this. Control L. Recommend this for the time being. Blah blah blah. You can see that the name of the function is undefined. So this is interesting. Uh, if we instead use a uh, name function expression, we say what like that. Now we clean, we run, and then we can see that, yep, exactly, the name function expression has indeed a name. And then there's something else that is interesting as well that is this uh, what happens when you bind this is an improvement in, in recent uh, JavaScript engines that they uh, are smart enough to use the name of the variable you assign the function to when uh, showing the name. So if we do the following and we do um, uh, obliterate, now we run this, clean run. Oh. You can see that even though this is an anonymous function expression, the JavaScript engine is smart enough to uh, give it the right name, so the name of the variable. But this, you know, since you often use uh, anonymous function expressions as, as arguments to other functions, and it's nice to, you know, just add a name to that anonymous function for debugging purposes. So let's make a quick summary here. So let's see. We go back here. So function expressions, uh, you have anonymous, you have name, don't have a name, hard debugging, improved. Then another interesting fact is that you also need the name uh, to be able to use recursion. So if you have an anonymous function expression, it doesn't have a name, you cannot, you cannot call itself for its body. A name function expression can do that. Uh, if you have an expression bound to a variable like this, then you can use a recursion as long as this doesn't change. But if it changes sometime along the program, then you basically have, have caused some weird shit back in your program. So that's one thing. Then another interesting thing about function expression, particularly when you bind them to variables, is that they are hoisted as variables. So what 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 is this? So in order to explain this, it's we need to explain function declarations. So function declarations, they, they are interesting because uh, they are named by default, because you cannot declare them all otherwise. And then they are hoisted entirely. And this allows us to do something uh, that I like a lot, which is to have the public API of a module at the top of uh, the module. So you can clearly see it when you go inside um, uh, a module. So we do, we read, as coders, we usually read much more than we write. So it's nice to, when writing code, optimize it for reading. So the next person, or even yourself, in a couple of months, come back to the file, will be able to understand what the code does. And the best way to do that, I'm getting an email from Unity. And you can do that probably in a couple of techniques. The first one is having your public API at the top of uh, a module. So the person that you go inside, so the person that you see when you go inside a module is your public API that represents what that module does and offers. 
as a service to the rest of your application. And the other way is um, structuring your code from higher level of abstractions to lower levels. So when you go inside a model, you see um, like an overview of what it does. Uh, you may not care about the implementation details, but if you do, you can go from high to low, uh, seeing what the implementation of the different parts are. Um, and this is based on a principle uh, in user experience that is called the principle of progressive disclosure. So, and this helps humans manage complexity uh, and cognitive load. So what happens is that instead of giving you all the information at once, we give you the most important information first, the one that you need at uh, each moment in time to understand a concept, and in this case, it's a public API. And then as you want to learn more, you just go, uh, we go progressively disclosing that information to you. Uh, and in the world of programming, that means um, going into a module, seeing a, a function with a high level descriptive name of what the module does. And then you go inside the function, uh, which has some implementation. And e each time that you remove one layer, you get nearer the implementation. Uh, of some part of the code, but you only get enough information each time to have a better understanding. Instead of giving you the full implementation at once, which is uh, 100 lines of code of uh, low level uh, code, we give you uh, tidbits that help you understand the code little by little. So this is what we call progressive disclosure and how it helps readability. But let's see this with an example because I've been talking here for like 10 minutes without showing anything. Let's create another GSV. Create a GSV. And I'm gonna use blah, 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 JavaScript and console. Now, so let's illustrate this progressive disclosure example with a function declaration. So imagine that you have an alchemy shop. So we say alchemy, alchemy, alchemy. And I'm gonna use, you know, in the olden days we didn't have modules, ESX modules, but we had something, we have different patterns that we created throughout the years to, to package code in a, in a nice way and isolate it from global scope. And one of those was the, um, uh, what we call the revealing module pattern. So basically, we create a function that returns an object, and this is your public API. Uh, and then here you can have some code. It could be both, both public and private, but only the stuff that we expose here is going to be um, your public API. So the public API in this case is going to be something called uh, make potion. I'm mixing. I'm, I'm not going to mix ES6 and ES5. I want to use ES5 first. So the cool thing here is that using function declarations, you can do something like this. So you start coming to this module, alchemy. Okay, this is the public API, you can make a potion. Okay, so then uh, the make potion uh, function uh, takes, they say that it takes uh, recipes, a recipe. And then a reference to be like your uh, inventory or something like that. And then, you go inside and say, okay, so we want to make a potion. The first thing that we need are ingredients. So let's say ingredients equals um, get ingredients, and then you do the recipe and inventory. Then uh, you uh, let's say that you get like the potion like this, and then you use mix ingredients, and then you use plus ingredients and the recipe. And then you would continue implementing. So if you want, for instance, to, you may want to, let's say that you're a user of this um, uh, Alchemy uh, module and uh, you want to understand how we're mixing the ingredients, you come into this function, you come into this module, you read the API, okay, make potion, and then how do we do that? Okay, we get the ingredients, mix ingredients. I don't really care right now about how we get the ingredients. It may come from uh, my inventory that I have in my wardrobe or it may need it may require me to go to the shop maybe I mean it be I may need to order some dragon wings online it doesn't really matter right now I only care about mixing ingredients and 
and this level of abstraction is totally fine with me right now. I don't need to know how to give ingredients. And then I could go to see how we're mixing the ingredients and so on, etc. So this is what I mean with uh, you know you come into the function, you, uh, you come into the module, you get part API, you get a high level review of what this module does. Okay, this module alchemy helps you make potions, uh, and then you go on to how 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 to make a, a potion. Mm, so this this is uh, possible this type of a structure because we're using function declarations and function declarations are hoisted uh, entirely so with a complete definition so if you're not familiar with hoisting hoisting is something that happens uh, in JavaScript runtime so whenever you declare a variable in a function scope with the bar keyword so let's say that we were going to use a um, anonymous function so we say make potion and something like that. What happens here is that when the JavaScript runtime sees this code, it's gonna do this. It's gonna do, okay, var make potion, this is equivalent to this, and then here I make the assignment, uh, and then if we were gonna expose this, uh, like we do with the function declaration, this would actually be undefined. Because at this point in time, the make potion two variable doesn't have any value. We assign the value here. So if we were to call alchemy alchemy dot um, make potion two uh, with some ingredients, this would give us that horrible error undefined is not a function. Okay. So that's what we call hoisting as a variable uh, because it's a variable declaration. It gets hoisted like this and it causes this error because it's undefined. If we use function declarations instead, what happens is that they are hoisted entirely. So this is pretty cool. What happens is that uh, when the JavaScript random sees this, it moves the whole function up here with the entire body, and then that's why we can use it here. So the JavaScript random takes care of it, we can use it, and it results in awesome readability. So you have great um, read and code that it's very easy to read and then the structure of the file of the module helps you get a better understanding um, of the intention of the code through that principle of progressive progressive through that principle of progressive disclosure uh, and this is equivalent to if we're going to use um, let's remove this or yeah if we're, something that i see very often these days in uh, es6 modules is that we do uh, export class uh, sword, uh, whatever, and then you come later and you say export uh, call yeah, interface uh, something, and then you go and export export, and you know this is optimized for the, for the writer. You just come into the file, you 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 maybe writing extending stuff in the file and adding exports all the way, and then when the reader comes here. Is not able to read what a particular module does very well because all the exports which represent the public API are spread throughout the file. Much better solution, I think, is to uh, just like we did here that we have the public API on top, you can do the same thing uh, in your ES6 modules and you just export uh, your public API. So in this case, it would be make potion, for instance. Uh, and you can use um, shorthand notation, so you don't need to do, you know, if you're in ES6, you don't need to do this. Use shorthand notation, you can just say a potion, uh, do whatever, uh, sword, or, you know. And this is equivalent to having all of them spread throughout the file, but the good thing is that you can see at a glance what is the API of a module, and I think this is very nice. So let's go back to, to, to where we had all our functions before. So let's make a summary. So there's different ways that you have to declare functions in JavaScript. The first ones are function expressions. Uh, in the most common are anonymous. Uh, they don't have a name, so they're hard to debug and you cannot use them in recursion. And then you have name function expressions that are an improvement of anonymous ones because they have a name, so you can have better debugging and refer to them in recursion. Uh, both of these have a problem, that is that they are hoisted at variables. 
and uh, they don't allow you to do that uh, nice top to bottom approach that I showed you. But uh, function declarations are better than function expressions because they allow you, uh, they give you both a name they can, they, that can be used for debugging or recursion and then also they're hoisted entirely that allows you to have this nice structure top to bottom that I showed. So prefer using function declarations to function expressions. Mm. One thing I didn't mention about hoisting is that um, hoisting works when you declare a function expression with the var keyword. So with, with the var we have hoisting at the function scope and we get that undefined. So we don't we don't get a, an error right away, right? In this case of the model, we just expose the undefined for API and it's only when we use them that we recognize that there is an error. If we use the let and count keywords, then uh, the runtime is much better. Uh, so if you use a variable before you declare it, you're gonna get an error. So that's better, but you can still, you can't still have that top to bottom uh, structure that I showed you. So even though you use the counts, you have better developer experience, but uh, you're not allowed to refer to those functions before you declare them, so you cannot have that top to bottom uh, implementation. And then finally, we have the arrow functions. Arrow functions, I'm gonna leave them for another chapter because before you explain arrow functions, you need to go into what this is in JavaScript. But they behave, uh, for the purpose of this uh, video, they behave very much like function expressions and uh, anonymous function expressions because you, you don't have a way to name them. So they have the same problem that um, the anonymous function expression have. And that's it, that's all for today. I hope that you have an, uh, your, your functions and learned something. And uh, take care and have an awesome day. Oh, be kind to people. One last thing. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, I actually wrote a blog post a long time ago. Uh, blah, 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 in my blog here. Mastering your Arabic Arabia Scribency for Sister Developers. Chapter two, the basics of functions. So pretty much, you can find what I said here with a bit more information. Um, this is, is an older version, so if you want to get the latest, I wrote a book here with awesome um, pixel art. Bloopers. In the background. In the background, in the background. Oh my god. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about. Fuck this shit.